as we're ready to head over to Miramar. We are shifting gears as we head over to the desert here for Group A of the PEL Kickoff Cup. And it is going to be game number seven to figure out who is going to be taking all of the points away to try and get themselves a top eight spot. Let's head over to the commentary team. That's what they're all vying for, those top spots now. We've already seen so many teams proving that they have what it takes to push towards the very tip top of all of these matches, but who can really push through from Group A? And for me, it's been such a surprising story of some of these upcoming teams certainly turning heads. But Miramar is a different beast, and that's a different playing path. That's quite brutal for anyone who likes to loot around the north or the west. You've kind of cut out 50% of the map instantly, so look for some really heavy Impala, Los Leones, somewhere maybe Minas Generales, some certain cities that you might not necessarily see a team looting towards. This is the time where you see a backup location coming to places where you've been doing your homework, what's going to be free, what's going to be available. Avanga, we've seen quite a few times go between the Campo Militar and Tierra Bronca, so that's all the way back in Minsk, so we know that's a bit of a home territory for them that we've seen quite a few times. I'm looking further afield. What's going to be busy around here? Okay, Impala goes over to Besiktas. It's easy for them. Picado, Wreck, they'll be all sitting happy. Usual place when we look towards Vitality and the Knights. Not too much of a change up, I wouldn't expect. But again, when we look towards Hacienda, maybe San Martin, that kind of crossover might get a little bit hectic. I'm interested to see where Rage Your Edge actually set up shop here. They've got a vehicle, so they could go further afield. And I suppose the next obstacle is really what is this circle going to do to us? <laughs> it does seem like the case, isn't it? It's just, uh, it's, it's been a bit brutal. Um, speaking of brutal, quite far south. Now, why that may be brutal is purely of the amount of water, but there's actually a lot of teams already south in the plane path. I guess it's anyone going north is, is having a very bad day. The worst thing, I say the worst thing, it's the worst and the, and the best thing, I suppose. Okay. The worst thing about this circle is you don't get the water uh, multiplier coming in until circle four. So this circle could still shift or still s stay central. Players, by the time circle four comes around then, if there's water still in play, basically, with such a small amount of land, you basically just play border control. Now, let's kind of boil that down further, because we like to do that. Um, we know that circles don't normally like, I guess, towns as such. And there's quite a big town in that circle. We have seen it go to Leona's a few times. It, it is a it rarity, is rare. and I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll follow up with that one. It is extremely rare. And you are right. When we speak about tendencies, we kind of see some of these endings kind of been funneled into valleys, I would say, by the topography of the map. It will tend to pull away from cities. It will tend to avoid huge... Um, areas that you basically can't get to, inaccessible terrain up on top of the, the, the hills and the mountainsides and the cliffs and so on and so forth. So, But I would like it to go to Leona's. It's when, it when would we make get me those, very happy. Honestly, they are mental. They are insanity to watch mm -hmm. play out because it's just basically urban combat, but it is fun. It's hard to cast. It's hard as hell, but it is super, super fun because it is a rarity. We like that. We saw what happened, you know, we've had power grid endings. We've had some curious, curious things. And if it's not going on the islands, I just want anything else that would be a little bit obscure. Not Millie Islands. Thankfully, that is not going to happen here. Everyone's looting away. We don't see too many people struggling right now. There might be some adjustments purely because no one is currently towards the northwest. Obviously, you guys at home can see that. I don't need to tell you absolutely everything you can see. Um, but at the end of the day, we do see a bit of a kind of plain path I guess, re reaction to a degree. Teams have had to adapt it and kept that in mind. And that's good. It's good to see them able to do so. But it does mean Circle 1 probably won't have too many problems. I am going to be looking at rotation routes and where those kind of crunch points will be. Uh, that eastern road could certainly get busy. And Besiktas have been punishing people on rotation. So I'm curious to see if they're going to get in the action of it. They were down very early, so their loot should be pretty primed and ready to go. So they can start considering that themselves. Beyond that, though, I'm looking towards the teams now sending out those scouts. There's a couple on the move. They're looking for the first kind of position they want to start heading towards. Usually I'd say there might be options here to be really clever and go for a western rotation and coming on the western side of this circle because no one should, or, or in theory, should be heading towards the northern edge of that circle. Now, it's okay saying, yeah, no one's around west because that's not where the playing path went. Look at the circle still. 
We have M19, we have, who else have we got? Tornado Energy, Digital Athletics. Still all these teams are in there. Yeah. And because there's, what, over half the server already inside a circle that's already denied by 50%, it's going to be such a brutal, brutal killing field. The entry points of the circle, you kind of got to go early. The, the longer you leave this, the more teams are just going to sit on the edge and wait for you to approach them. Is indeed the case, and every time I see Desperados, I do want to say Despacito, and I can't help myself. You know, it's just like when you start saying Despacito. Yeah, it's terrible. I'm sorry. Like whoever picked that name, I really like the team, but every time I say it in my head, the words. And, and especially on a map like Miramar, exactly. it kind of goes Please hand don't in hand. Encourage me. <laughs> it's very difficult. Um, we are seeing the team starting to rotate getting themselves into the better position that they can. You saw a couple of shots there, especially on the map. I think it was actually not Despacito, Desperados, um, letting a couple of them fly. I, I, again, it's, it's mostly teams just trying to vie for those early positions that are really, really um, kind of sorted for, sought after. Um, beyond that, though, it's, it's going to be that kind of land grab towards the south here. The south of Leones is going to get very busy very quickly. Um, this map does lend for a lot of teams in close proximity due to, as we like to say, the topography of the map. And what that means in very basic terms is the fact that the terrain will help you out. It will allow you to play in smaller areas because it, it's been kind of twisted and small hills, the dips in the hills that allow you to play alongside it. And here are those rotations. Uh-oh, I've just seen that Ultra's having a bit of a mare there with Tom Hill. This is not good for Besiktas, but it is very good for We Need a Home. Now, last time around, we remember they were calling a bit of an extended battle by one player for a very long time on Miramar. Now, Simsy looks all but over. So that will go very nicely placed into Weenie the Home. And that was one of the battles that was on the eastern side initially. I thought Besiktas would be able to get away from them, not have too many issues. But that's not been the case. We've got a pull up as well. Someone has actually just unleashed hell on one of the Avangard players. And that driving is not going to help you out. Avoid the tree. Keep moving. Get the heck out of there. Tommel was holding on for dear life but a grenade comes out of the compound and commits him to Besiktas they're already down to two members make that three as Ultra hits the deck as well he's confirmed and Besiktas oh my god they have just been completely annihilated by we need a home and more importantly because of these quick rotations you'd have to assume that certain teams have been lacking gear for we need yes. a home one much needed points four points in the bag job done two if they're lacking gear and utility, well, I saw an M24 at one point, one of those players, they basically oh, they just upgraded the, the entire team. Mm. That's going to be very nice for them. And they currently have a little bit of respite too, unless maybe your Navis or Seven potentially head further east to get out of the heat of it all, which I don't think they will. The other teams are on the way. You've got Tornado coming down. You have Red Diamonds coming down. Avangar are coming from the north towards the eastern side. But that's yet to be seen. So for them, we need home have a little bit of a second to reconvene, pull themselves in back together, kind of get good spots, get dug in. It's really good for them. So they can be looking late game at this point until those teams do eventually come across. A fair amount of room now for entry points into this circle because everyone's centering up. Playing it a little bit later has gone in their advantage. I did mention that players could be playing border control or just bouncing on the edge of the white, but they're not. They're going to be going center and being prepared for where this circle could go. The, there is a, a minor downside to going center. Yes, you're putting yourself in a good position for where the circle could be, but the simple fact, if it does still hard shift, which it could do, you then go into this mass migration where things are just messy and you may be in a very, very bad spot for basically being bottlenecked into a corner. The Knights will just be flooding past Picado off screen. Raise your edge. You're actually playing a very raise your edge kind of way. Um, we saw through phase one, they were very, very slow to the party, and this will be no different. They are taking that western route, which I did say they'll be coming over to Monte Nuevo through the blue in a couple of minutes' time, and still arriving very, very late to the circle. They will be damaged. They will need as many meds as humanly possible because mm. the circle will shrink now, and the damage will increase. It comes away from water, almost centers up. Leona is looking like it's outside of the play zone for the next circle, but still, anything could happen. It, it definitely can. I'm, I'm waiting to see if it does, though. I, I think, thankfully for Asia Edge, that northwest side is pretty sparse of players, which is pretty good for them. They can at least kind of come into a good point here. That road's good for them. It really is. It, it's a very good approach. They should be fine for now. 
wait and see beyond that, though, what can potentially happen here. Ooh. We're seeing a couple of the teams adjusting around, already kind of absconding away from Osteo, and it's not surprising there. Maybe some of the teams in that kind of southeast area might want to try and centralize. It looks like we need a home maybe doing that. Raise Your Edge have done something completely different to what I expected. They're not taking the Monte Nuevo road straight in through Los Leones or, or Cumacera. They're actually still going on the west and heading down south, so they are going for very That's deep very and very late rotate. Ten minutes in the game and still in the blue. Mm. You need the meds here, boys, because when you arrive, you're going to be weak, you're going to be wounded, you're going to be lacking them, so I hope they've completely geared up. You'd expect them to yeah. bow all four players to be double stimmed and keeping that topped up using bandages where possible and just save the FAKs so when you get inside this one. So a little further afield a little bit and a certain look around here. What else have we got? Leones, many teams have come out there. Unity are playing the back side of it, so Ooh, basically nice just pick. gatekeeping the road. Vanga have just come out of the blue. Again, they came all the way down from Campo Militar, the longest rotate out of all these teams, and Ooh, somehow vitality. still made it before Reggie Reg. Vitality are in a bit of a pickle here. They've got a bit of pressure north and south. They had a bit of a split, and the split's a bit rough around the edges. This is nice, a little bit of shooting there from Set. That's Grow Crowd. They're the team currently to the south of Los Leones. To the north, it is Unity, and the Knights are quite close to them. So again, this is one of those situations that could boil over. You could see some of these teams eventually pressuring each other just off the back of that. We do finally see Rage Reg making it into the previous circle, so they are safe for now. The damage will subside, but a couple of these shots now starting to land. Red Diamonds could be in a spot of bother because Tornado aren't that far, and they're both kind of rotating in the similar direction. I'm not sure if they're going to pull up and fully commit here, or if they're just going to try and ward off the enemies for now and try and continue their journey to where they want to go. But everyone's condensing again to the southern side of Leones. There's not going to be that many available places now. If you are going to be one of the teams on the outskirts, you're going to have to commit to that game style. Kamka might have found a nice little way forward, though. That kind of threads the needle between two. We need a home is on the southwestern side, so they need to be cautious of several eyes now looking towards their position. Red Diamonds need to be cautious and make sure their heads are all on a 360-degree angle here because Vanger actually just coming in behind them. They're finally inside the circle. Same for Razor Your Edge as well. They're up on the dark side of the hills, all the way on the western embankment. Digital Athletics will have seen them come in, or at least they should have done, with the elevated line of sight that they have been provided by their compound. In the center, Vitality have managed to take one of the big warehouse hangars. On the outskirts, the Knights may have a difficulty if the circle shifts away from them. Mm. They're, they're about 300 meters inland, so it's not too bad and not completely no. away. Let's have a look where she goes and what this does to the game, because this could oh, be... I want a hard shift. No, no. I'll take there that. you go. I'll take that any day of the week. That You just jinx that. I like it. I enjoy these things. Let me have my fun. <laughs> all right? And mostly other people's misery. The point is that all the Eastern teams that were there quite early now have to shift. And that's what excites me is that I get to see some of the newer teams and how they have to adjust themselves going into a circle that has actually a lot of the big names pre-set up. Desperados are in there. You've got um, Digital Athletics pretty set up into this. Knights can come down from the north. Bodes well for Razor Edge. They kind of benefited from the hard shift. Um, other teams, M19 looking quite good. Na'Vi have a very early step into this. We need a home. Also, quick to move. That 2-2 split for them working out well. But you've got to look further east here, Rachel. There's going to be a lot of teams, and maybe towards the north slightly, now having to fully change things up. East will be extremely uh, messy, but the main thing that we have to remember of this, now we're moving into circle four. We have the water multiplier and the modifier, should I say. There is still a little bit of water in place, so this circle will go north and it will move away from, so nobody, all these teams will be moving away from the south and not putting themselves down there in a very bad We've and tough up, position. Rich. We've got a Vanguard moving in. They might have made a bit of an error here this time. I, I think they could peel out of this, but I don't know if they want to. Nade gets... That's not bad. Pushed out. That isn't bad at all. But for now, Avanga are still alive. They can peel away across the road as it is on that slightly higher elevation. Oh. That nade's quite good, though. Maxi has to respond in time. He can't just kind of sit here. Now, they are wasting the utility of seven esports, but I don't see a clear kill off the back. The nade is really good. Edelweiss has to back up, but his nade did find Maxi in the end. So it was worth the commitment. Finally takes him down. He's been sat there holding point with the M24. Maybe a bit of a waste. Rita comes in, knocks Senna, Maxi finally down. That's actually a stolen kill all the way across from Set. CC, pick up one point, job done. Desperados, they've gone center. Navi also in there. M19 are right by them. Here but there is Tornado. a three-team split here. Vanger are waiting for it. 
Oh, the mechanic side as well. Show you what it can do. Make me love it. I don't. It's fallen apart. I had some hope. It's gone very poorly, actually. Tornado have just swept through here already, picking up the remainder of the two-man split for a Vanguard. But they, we know there's a third party potential. We know that seven are in that small compound, but they have this little dip to walk away from. It was the elevated road that runs through with those slight deflades and dips off the side of it, which does allow Tornado to continue moving slightly further south. There isn't too much contest there, but speaking of contest, further south, Red Diamond's gonna kick off if we need a home. And for now, a third party just came in from a doozy. And that's a doozy of a shot as well. That's quite far away towards the north. That is not close at all. We're just probably gonna be a little bit gutted from that one. As we do see, we need a home at least racking up some points. Six kills for them, this is a good performance. And they certainly need it. They're doing the job. It looks like Real is going to be the last player alive. KP just on the side of Red Diamonds. The rest of his team. It took an early engagement, unfortunately, and lost a few players. And now the last man standing looking for 15th place will have to run away from this one. We spoke about the fight. You know what? This is insane. I was just about to mention this. So we spoke about the fight that happened earlier on with Seven and Tornado Energy. Tornado Energy have actually been lucky in the fact that they decided to disengage from it, not go for any points. They didn't need to. They're on the backside and the hard side of the hill. Instead, they went for an open compound. I tell you what, it has paid absolute dividends. All four players now can tuck themselves in a huge compound. Stand out a bit of ground here. They'll even have an elevated line of sight to give them some distance and maybe even a rotation oh. should they have to. Desperados, though. Good Lord, time and time again, they are center circle. Yes, they are. And the reason I got so excited about the circle is because it went hard shift west, and now it's gone all the way back east. And it's always when Brendan's in chat. Mm. It's like he's... At a side, we are seeing Chris now forced into the action. Good work on one, but it's the trade there. Yes, it is. Right back into the action. Unity not allowing him to get away with that. Maybe overcommitting on that ridge line, forcing Unity into the rest of the fight. Now, that's a big loss for Raise Your Edge. Chris was out on his own. The rest, though, of that northwest side are now going to fall forward. They're going to have to kind of pull themselves in. Rex still hold the line up there. We do have Digital Athletics in the same sort of position as well. We need a home a kind of in a bad spot. You have the remainder of the Red Diamond behind them, creeping forward, and you do have M19 in front. Now, the circle is just bordering in front of them. And also, worst scenario, I actually think he meant to go Smoke Reader, and he actually needed it instead. Yep. Um, so a bit of a misplay there. There is still three alive, though. They can try and make something happen. But as you mentioned before, they are outside the zone. Oh, that smoke feels very thin. inside, but they have to be careful. There is this still one member of Red Diamonds lingering in the distance. Now, they did damage the Red Diamonds earlier on. This could be a knife or a dagger in the back. Should he get any line of sight on this one? It depends where Polo wants to go, though. We'll move across yeah. to a different fight, though. Unity versus the Knights. Where is this? Okay, so the Knights are being kept held at bay here. Reels is actually outside, and he'll be dying soon. No one get a res on that one. Raise your edge. Also need to make something happen here. But I tell you what, there's multiple angles. Three teams can actually see where the Knights are. This is awful for them. Yeah, it really is. We do have Raise Your Edge now, just kind of like rolling as much as they can. Ooh. They might get done for the trade and delivers a bullet to the brain. That's going to open up an opportunity. Unity did not expect that at all. Smoke goes in. Mertznade finds all the other players. That's not far away either. This is all on that western side. Sixmo delivers one as well. This is Razor Your Edge looking very, very bad here. This has gone poorly. The nade's now being poured in towards the teams holding them back and they're delivering their land and Drayden is going off for the moment for the Knights. Charging forward. I think there's only one man standing now left for Unity. And they might even be pressured as well. This could not have gone worse for them. They were holding the circle. The Knights had so many eyes towards them. Wanted still in trouble. Do not rest yet. Do not take your eye off the prize of purely getting into that circle because there's so many threats waiting for you. Recrentis has to hold point and lay down because he's just seen his two teammates get completely bodied by Drayden. Steps up with the N24 and hit a big boy shot when it matters most. Opens up the door, throws the grenades and completely finishes it off. We need a home. Did find a home. The real KPE. How many meds have you got? I can't quite see on there. But he's got a stim at least and he will be inside for the next one to go through. Northern end of the circle. Vitality are actually on the rotate. They've made it in. Crow oh. crowd have got them dead to right. So only just they have been tanking what up those Rexy vehicles. Well? I want to see if reciprocity have an angle on that. I don't think they do. I think there's probably a hill in between. Do they have an elevated building as well to potentially join Maybe. in that one? Maybe. Eastern shift again. Oh, the pans are the Ding. MVPs forever. Maybe Ooh, here in that. Oh, 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 Drayden. Drayden's getting closer. Does he know? Oh, Drayden. That's cooked. Drayden. This is a high IQ maneuver. Incorrect car, but I loved it. It's a very, very nice mentality just to consistently remember that there's still a player nearby. I don't think the remainder from Unity has actually shown hand recently, but 
Smart approach. As Drayden needs to continue doing this. This is what's great about sniper rifles. They give you that one-shot ability, that chance to push forward. The potentially DMRs don't always do. The remainder for Razor Edge are just running the gauntlet in the car, just desperately trying to get in. Uh oh, Unity! Oh, that's big from the remainder. Takes down one. Nate oh. is good. Nate is very good. Drayden is still going off. That's all three members gone down by the big man. And they'll be able to get the res off on his fallen teammate also. Tornado Energy, they're actually inside the white. They're pretty good. But we have a mass brawl going on over at this compound. Look in the distance. Navi versus M19. Blue comes in. Drayden didn't get him up just in time, unfortunately. It looks like Navi have actually turned on to Digital Athletics to try and keep them outside and pinned into the blue. But M19's loving this. They're reeling off the back of this and going to get set up for when Navi actually come down from the mountains. Yeah, they've done best lot to keep tabs on that, but I'm a bit worried. Drayden, I think, has just gifted himself to the blue, potentially, at that point. Uh, that is the Knights gone. So that's gone very poorly as, I don't know what happened, maybe a tag came through, I do not know. Navi, if they've overextended here and taken themselves out of the cover, have now forced themselves into the middle of a very scary sandwich. Not what you want, Subway. Far too late at night. It's 11 p.m. Nothing looks fresh. This is what the position they're currently sat in. And let's see how this goes, though. They have found a beautiful death. But now, let's see how many eyes turn towards them. A doozy finds one. Here comes the pressure. Six most gone down. Have they managed to do this? No, not yet. Oh, Desperados are getting involved. Two of them are pushed up. They're going for the 2-2 two -two split. They're going to try and get involved in this one and look down oh, the mountainside. M19 have peeled off as well. That southern pressure is no longer there. We need a homer pick to that up. So that's why that kind of sandwich never came through. That's why the issue never became actually a problem. Clean up. Here is the issue, though. The Desperados appear over the hill. And the scar is tearing them limb from limb. Best of luck is your last man standing. We Need a Home could see this too. They are on the lower side of this ridge. And if they get a glimpse, they are going to take him out. All four members of Desperados are now committed to the cause. Navi is dead to rights. They're gone. The next team, what may fall damage though. We have We Need a Home directly in front of the Desperados. They keep going. They'll get an eye line on them. However, seven from across the other side of the map, they are pinging them. This may distract them for a second and give We Need a Home a bit of respite. M19 though, while all this was going on, they centered up, so nice play from them, nice maneuver. They've got a, a level three person in there with the gear, with the org. They can do some damage should the circle go their way, which it does. In the north, though, you're looking at him right now. This is where the next punishment happens. Scoom, he's peeled off from the rest of Reciprocity. He's going to find them a home inside the circle. Unfortunately for him, though, he may have just found set seven directly across the road. The rest of Wreck have to deal with Vitality, but Vitality have got a battle of themselves. CC are getting involved behind them. Yeah, this is all about to kick off in the north. This is a huge, huge lineup of players. We have Reciprocity with two very close to the blue. They kind of pull Shiv a little further forward, and Scoom is in center as he can get. Now, Crow Crowd are to the northeast. They're, they're just off the ridge, so they're not quite in the fight just yet, but there's eyes from afar, and they are scary. Desperado's keeping tabs on this fight, and that's Vitality in the middle of it all. So we will be seeing Vitality fighting towards the east. That's Hello Senpai getting caught in this one. But the blue is now moving them forward. They have to start chipping away at each other. They can no longer take their time on this one. There has to be some pace. There has to be some urgency. It looks like Vitality are heading right towards Reciprocity. Oh, just over the ridge. The pre-nade, it forces them towards the blue. It does not get that much damage done. But it's this is what we're going to be looking at. Great work from Jazz. It takes down Rafi. Where's the rest of Reciprocity? They're on the other side of the ridge. But Hello Senpai says hello and catches them out here. Reciprocity are trying to do what they can from afar. But it's Vitality falling in droves here. Jazza is down. We're down to just Shadow in this situation. Haxedi and Shiv do not have great cover here. They have a ridge line and maybe a blade of grass keeping them safe at this point, as Scoom is pretty much being their anchor to stay in this game. The Desperados are keeping Shadow on his toes, not feeling comfortable. Then you've got Crow Crowd as well doing the same thing. Seven in the same situation, but they're now backswing across the circle. The remainders of Reciprocity, it's how do you get to Scoom in this one? You've literally got the Desperados just looking and waiting for every Desperados single challenge so that they want to take. But they are getting involved in so many fights that they should have been. I like the aggression. You might as well get stuck in and pick up as many points as you can. And all of a sudden, the laser beams come alive. We need a home goes down. And because we're playing such an open middle ground, it's basically just easy pickings for all these teams. Crow Crowd's the next one. They step up and then straight away instantly they step out. One, two, three teams, seven. Reciprocity, Desperados, because of this open ground and because you're basically coming into a bold condition here, everyone can see you no matter where you go. And this will be the difficulty for Reciprocity. How do they get to Scoom? Do you know what gets my 
head spinning. How many teams of four players alive still? We have a lot of heavy stacks here of teams. We're not down to those isolated individuals yet, but that's about to change. Tornado on the run. Dmash tries to make it connect, can't make it happen with the last couple of bullets there. Hits the reload, might have a chance beyond this one. He did find Kamka on the way, but at this point, he's a little bit out on his own. The rest of the team are trying to move towards circle, create an opportunity for himself. Elite player on the move. Calvin Klein applying more pressure. Not surprising at this point as the Desperados are doing so well. Nine kills now, but have they spread themselves too thin? Have they taken too many fights on too many fronts, or are they still okay? Taking all these fights, looking towards the extremities, has slowed down their step towards the middle. And how on earth is this player being so quiet, so calm, so collected? He's hearing these nades, these smokes going off just next to him. He's holding his own. It was a bit of a ballsy play from Desperado. They committed outside. Ravelin going forward. X team goes down. Looking straight down the barrel from Kanka. That could be an absolutely beautiful grenade. There's two players just bounced a little bit too far, I believe. But there's another one coming in. It could be a smoke from his teammates to allow them. For the res, the smokes are up. This will give them a bit of respite for now. Desperados get themselves back together. Dimash still going hard here onto Kamka with the AUG X team. He's confirmed by Elder Vice. That's a steal from across the map again. Tornado Energy is down in sixth place. However, I will say this while all this has been going on, Scoom was rather clever. He kind of gave Desperados a little bit of a problem by shooting them in the back, which then forced them inside the building for a bit of cover, get themselves back together. Now, all of a sudden, reciprocity, they put themselves as a three-man stack inside a compound. That was such a beautiful maneuver where all this was going down. Get yourself back together, get your team healed up, and get ready for the next circle. Yeah, I, I still have to say, though, Seven, uh, as a team, have been doing very well here. They've been holding themselves together, may have overly split one of their players. Potentially, that could be punished. Dimash is still patrolling towards that southern side, waiting to see if there's anyone snaking closer in there. Is a snake in the grass? We know where the remaining Rage Your Edge player may be, but... This is not the gun to be playing at that sort of range, and I'm worried. Every shot they take, I can see the Desperados looking over and lingering and hoping for a peek here. As now we do see five teams remaining. Most teams do have their little cut of the circle now. They're not going to move too far just yet. They have the back of these obstacles to play from. And they are inside the circle room, remember. However, I'll device through the trees. will have the shoulder peak to give him some level of defense. M24 needs to be careful because... They could be sending a 7-6-2 his way. 1-2, thank you. Now he's forced to heal. This will give them a bit of a, of a respite to make a maneuver should they want to. Circle will go their way. A bit of a hard shift. You want to call it that more towards the northwest area. Wreck, they'll hunker down because they know that 7 is the next obstacle basically crossing the road. This becomes extremely difficult for them to inject themselves into this circle. What becomes even harder, if Nemerif just goes for the knock and a flush, picks up a point before dying, it then takes 7 down to a three-man stack. They're about to walk past him again. You can see them on the screen. He is having none of it. This rotation actually plays really unfavorable for M19 because yeah. Seven's moving away from Rex. They know where they are, but it basically just puts M19 up against it. They're going to they're gonna literally see them from two different angles, from inside the wide and outside also. Absolutely. This is, this is very uncomfortable. Dimash again keeps getting a lot of damage done. Sadly, not be able to transfer this into many kills. We've got one so far. Edelweiss was on the receiving end of a lot of damage, but this low ground is not going to pay dividends at this point. Dimash, and they, they, they do need to move. They are the furthest out currently. They've given up the ground, but this is a very aggressive move. Maybe a little bit haphanded from Crab there. Pushing a little further forward, he does manage to hit the deck, but I don't know how long he can stay alive in this sort of spot. One nade would certainly force them out, but... Nemesis moving. Well, should be aware of this one in the back. On the move. Good shout. Buster goes down. Crab goes down. It's Raise Your Edge's remaining man. Doing it all. That's huge play. If it wasn't going bad, now it's going even worse for Seven as they were getting pinned down as well from M19. We do have Wreck finally joining in towards the game. Where it did get found, and now M19 still pushing forward. This has all worked out quite well for them somehow. This has forced them further in towards the fight, but we do see Reciprocity and Desperados waiting for that big fight to happen. Raise your edge basically just help M19 get into this circle. He had seven, just completely split by the win by taking down two individual players. Scoom turns on the pinhead. He knocks the last player from Razor Edge, which confirms an instant kill, gives him the point. Wreck, they're centering up. Scoom's holding the hard angle, which oh, watches that's... everyone down south. Yep. We do have a knock on the side of Desperado, so that'll force them out of the game for just a second, but it slows them down. That's the most important thing. I think there's been several knocks on Desperados now, which eventually you will start to see quite a lot of gear being removed. The durability's there, the damage is done. Needlevice, the man who we've seen clutching time and time again and picking up a fair amount of kills. Molly's come his way, and I think 
Scoom's actually got him dead tonight. Yep, he's gone. So now we're down to our last three teams. Yeah, this is where it gets scary, though, for Reciprocity to a degree. Their ground is so good, though. Look at the way the skill side rolls down perfectly. Really nice vision down towards M19. What's exactly the position Scoom's been watching? But they cannot take too many fights on too many fronts. They can't split themselves uh -oh. too thin because someone like this is going to emerge. It's Calvin Klein delivering bullet after bullet. Ship is down to nothing. He should bleed out any second now. Very limited chance. Scoom, nice deeper angle, though. Oh, Good duck. return fire. Calvin Klein, three sets. Pop back up. Calvin Klein is an animal. Axetti stands still. Calvin Klein gets the heel off. We're down to two players standing for either side. M19 still have players up here. They still have a chance to be the kind of dark horse in this one. And here comes M19, finally showing their hand. It's the Desperados who've now taken the too many fights. They've been picked apart on too many fronts. Reciprocity still hold the hill. M19's loving life. All these teams are fighting one another and just completely ignoring them. We've lost K17 down to the blue, unfortunately. He's been knocked. This one absolutely murders. There's no getting away from F2 ticks and you're dead. I said he's forced off. Let's look across. Scoom goes down. Calvin Klein again doing damage time and time again to Wreck here. He will try and crawl around, but nothing he can do. Calvin, I hear all this going on. He says goodbye, takes some buff out. Now also he just laid into M19 as well. This kid's on a tear. Yeah, someone tries something. 9 HP is all he's got. He holds on to it, and he gets the job done. 9 HP, can you believe it?